Hi, this is Matt from tracymatt.co.uk. Here I have the HC HD2. Uh, earlier on we actually unboxed the HD2 and now we're going to have a quick look at the OS. So starting at the beginning, first of all we obviously have the today screen or home screen uh, which is set out like um, some, of, some of the other HTC devices um, with obviously the, calendar, the clock above, uh, a calendar section and then some shortcuts. Um, where the HD2 is slightly different is in that these shortcuts can be completely customised to be um, applications or speed dials um, or shortcuts to uh, web pages. Um, so that's slightly different uh, rather than them just being programs. Um, so I've obviously got Facebook set up here but I could also add a another program and I'm going to go ahead and add uh, where are we? I'm going to go and add Messenger and then I'm also going to add another application which is PEEP, which is the uh, HTC's Twitter application uh, and I'm going to go ahead and have a look at PEEP I've already got it configured here so I've signed in using our Tracy and Matt uh, Twitter account uh, and it does feed everything on here. I've got it set up at the moment so that uh, it actually refreshes uh, these uh, this list of tweets uh, every hour but I can also manually update that there by actually just clicking on the refresh and that will refresh everything in there now uh, and I can also um, go and see uh, update here and I can also do a new tweet here and you'll notice obviously it's bringing it's brought up the uh, text entry uh, which I've got the full QWERTY and uh, I can actually insert a location Unfortunately, being indoors, it hasn't picked up my current location because the GPS can't pick up a signal. So we'll cancel that for now. Um, let's just go ahead and put in a tweet here. And we'll put in a tweet. You know, testing peep on the HD2 and we can send that tweet and that's what that's gone out and what I can also do is see all my direct replies um, direct messages favorites and so on and we can come back out of that all together and uh, actually quit back to the home screen or the today screen uh, then we have people which is fully customizable again so we can add our speed dials in here. I haven't got any contacts set up but they would be added here. Messages, that's for text messages and SMS and MMS. Mail, uh, again you can have multiple email accounts. haven't set any up just as yet. Internet, uh, so we can actually launch our browser. Default browser on the handset is Opera and you can set up uh, shortcuts underneath, still getting used to the fact that it's a capacitive screen rather than resistive and uh, trying to remember not to use my fingernails, I'm actually use my finger um, but we can actually have shortcuts on the screen here uh, I've already got one set up which is tracyandmat.co.uk and we'll just go into that and and as you can see, not the fastest loading, but that is partly down to my internet connection. Living in the middle of nowhere, I don't get the best broadband service. Uh, that page is loading. Uh, you can see that it has an embedded video here, which it's also trying to load. And obviously the adverts down the side. And it is laid out reasonably well. I can tap to zoom in and tap to zoom back out. And then I can rotate the display by rotating the screen and then it's also fit it will stretch to fit the page and then I can rotate back as you can see the rotate is quite fast and it's fairly responsive and I can also zoom with two fingers so we can zoom in and zoom back out again using the pinch and pull method with two fingers very much like we do on say the iPhone uh, the, is uh, some discussion as to whether or not the HD2 has full 
uh, multi-touch capability. Now using two fingers to zoom in and out would kind of suggest that perhaps it does, um, but I don't believe that there is full touch multi-touch, um, whether or not it could be enabled. But the reason I say that is because when I hold down multiple things on the screen, um, I'm actually holding down over here now and it's still showing that uh, the, a, the H and the AND key ampersand key is uh, held down. If we go ahead and release that you'll see that uh, it is actually not really working in a multi-touch uh, situation there just with the uh, keypad. So I guess it's kind of a shame but it doesn't appear to have uh, full multi-touch capability. Um, I say whether or not that could be enabled or if it's just to support the zoom with two fingers um, not really sure at the moment but uh, it does seem a bit, of a bit of a pity moving on from Opera I'd like to go into Internet Explorer I'll just pop into Internet Explorer and we'll load up Tracy and Matt again now what I've discovered so far about uh, using the different browsers is that uh, Internet Explorer seems to load a lot faster than um, Opera does. Um, I prefer the browsing experience on Opera personally, although there's not a great deal to choose between them. Uh, there is a slight difference. One difference here, if you can see that, is that uh, the way the pages are loading, it's loading text in uh, just small blocks rather than filling the whole of the page as it should uh, on the desktop browser. I can do tapping to zoom in and I do get it to fit the area that I'm looking at and I can tap to zoom back out and I can rotate display um, I seeming to take slightly longer to rotate than Opera as you can see there but we're talking fractions of a second difference between the two really to be honest um, our player is actually being embedded there if I actually go ahead and launch the player through IE it does begin to load as you can see there and he's actually playing in place uh, which is quite cool it's not perfect uh, it's a little bit jittery uh, because obviously it is you know, scaling it and it is playing in place but um, it does work and it is usable and I'll just cancel out of there for now uh, you can you get the idea uh, and we can come back out of uh, IE close that and go back to our home screen uh, moving on again from from the internet we have our pictures and videos uh, so there's already some photos that are kind of on the ROM uh, which are pretty good as uh, sample images and uh, we can browse through images uh, on the display. Again, works kind of the same as the iPhone for browsing through the photos. And also we have, uh, I have a video that I've uploaded here. It is an MP4 and it's come straight out of iMovie. Um, it isn't HD, it's actually 640 by 360 pixels to give us this widescreen, so it's slightly scaled. But it is an MP4 and that will play back. This was uh, James's a uh, quick video of the HD2 from a couple of days ago. And as you can see that does play really quite well. Smooth playback, that's quite cool. Um, we'll test it with some HD video at, uh, at some other point in actual fact. If we come back out of there, we can go to music and uh, we've got some you know audio tracks that are again pre-installed for us and our media player controls work as you'd expect through there. Weather, again it's very similar to the weather that we have on uh, the other touch handsets and uh, does work pretty much as you'd expect it to. We can have multiple uh, cities set up, so we've got Barcelona and London there for example um, and it's just a little bit richer than the other touch handsets and the other weather implementation. We have a Twitter tab, uh, so obviously it's already updated to show the tweet that I did just a few minutes ago uh, and has a tab of its own then we can go back to see all tweets which uh, is much the same way as we've just looked at it a minute ago and we can go back so that is, it has its own tab then we have footprints uh, which is uh, sort of geotagging and 
uh, and that sort of stuff tells you where you've been, where the photographs were taken, that kind of stuff. Haven't really used it too much uh, in on this or any other handset in the in the past, so uh, perhaps it's something that we'll test in a little bit more, you know, a little bit more thoroughly when it comes to the full review. Then we do have our settings, and uh, we can personalise set wallpaper and customise wireless control is something that we're going to use fairly frequently because we can turn Wi-Fi on and off, turn Bluetooth on and off. Uh, direct push data connection and turn on and off that Wi-Fi router. Now the Wi-Fi router is extremely useful so it means that you can connect to your 3G network and then share that connection out through Wi-Fi so the uh, handset does become a wireless router. So that's very cool um, and it's very handy for anybody that's a commuter or uh, anybody that doesn't want to use a dongle rather than uh, that doesn't want to use a dongle in their laptop so that's quite cool. And come back out of there if we go all the way back to the beginning and back to our home screen or today's screen and we're going to start and we scroll through our list of applications uh, one of the other applications that comes pre-installed on the ROM is Copilot we'll just pop into Copilot and, Copilot Live. and we actually do have a 15 tri day trial of Copilot Live which is uh, which is nice. So it gives us the opportunity to really give it a thorough, a thorough test. Problem I found thus far with uh, the demo of Copilot is that um, initially you do have to download maps, and uh, the maps are in categories. Obviously, Western Europe, and I can go to UK and Ireland. I then have to download the map for the area or the whole of the UK or just a particular region or even just a particular city uh, and I have to download that. I can download it through the PC or I can download it through the handset itself so obviously I'm connected to Wi-Fi here at the moment so I could choose to connect and download um, straight to the handset. The issue I'm having with it at the moment and it could just be a temporary problem, it could just be a download issue um, but that uh, I've actually downloaded some, or attempted to, to download um, several different maps and uh, they just simply fail to unpack uh, and install properly once uh, once you've downloaded them we just end up with a uh, installation error so um, haven't been able to test the uh, haven't been able to test Copilot Live on the handset just at the moment uh, I can verify it works and uh, I can see that I actually do pick up in here I do actually pick up a GPS 3D GPS fix that all works uh, quite happily and we can actually see the satellite uh, signal strength uh, and that all works perfectly okay I just can't, can't seem to download maps at the moment so uh, that's uh, something that we have to do uh, when it comes to do the written review um, it's a bit of a shame but I can get into Google Maps and that does work quite well and I can get to my location again I can uh, use two finger zooming in and out and I can switch between satellite view and standard uh, satellite view and road view and there's also a hybrid one and also works with Google Latitude so that's all quite cool and I have a GPS fix with six satellites that all works perfectly okay and also while we're looking at the various applications we also have in other tools we have the digital compass uh, and this seems to work really really quite well um, I've, I'm kind of comparing this to the compass on the 3GS uh, and I, I really think that the digital compass on the HD2 seems to be more accurate than on the 3GS uh, in terms of the amount of drift that uh, I was noticing when playing around with 3GS doesn't seem to be the same on the uh, on the HD2 so that is there so uh, it would be good to see um, some more of the SatNav applications to actually support the compass um, uh, Copilot Live does support the compass which is quite cool so that's also in there there's also a proper YouTube application which we can go into and we can search for HTC HD HD2 videos 
and uh, as you can see there are quite a number already available on YouTube uh, and they do play back quite well taking just a few seconds to buffer and we can start playing so that's quite cool and the YouTube application works rather well uh, I can also add more shortcuts onto this home page if I want to I can add a total of nine there I'm using only three at the moment so I can add more if I choose to uh, text entry uh, if we just pop into messages and we'll compose a new message and we'll start to compose a new message Obviously, I'm looking at the full QWERTY keyboard here which uh, works quite well uh, the keys are large enough for me to you know, tap away with my finger without too much of an issue I uh, don't really have much of a problem with that we also then have a compact QWERTY which is uh, sometimes referred to as a 20 key QWERTY or the similar to the BlackBerry and then we also have a phone keypad so we can work um, by multi-touching the keys or using predictive T9 style or XT9 style text entry using uh, just a numeric keypad like that that's quite, also quite cool go back to the full QWERTY uh, we have different text input settings and we can change the language had some questions about language uh, text entry standard ones are English, French, German, Italian and Spanish and we have various text input settings that we can change also but the, norm, the standard QWERTY keyboard for me does work quite well there's enough screen space and the keys are you know, large enough for me to actually type quite happily with my thumbs or, or two thumbs and a couple of fingers or whatever that works quite well, no issues there going back to the main screen and the home screen we can actually tap, tap at the top and it will give us our notifications so we've got no sim installed, I'll connect to a Wi-Fi and our battery is 94% uh, I mentioned in my earlier video that uh, the battery seems to be um, somewhat unimpressive in terms of the capacity and I'm sticking to that, I have actually had to charge the battery during the day today I know I'm using it quite heavily, I'm playing around with Wi-Fi, GPS and obviously the screen's on quite a bit um, so how that actually settles down once we're just really using it day to day, making calls and so on uh, I'll comment on that when it comes to the full review um, the full review I should have uh, later on this week for you on tracyandmat.co.uk and uh, if you have any questions please feel free to sit, submit them to us through our forum uh, that's tracyandmat.co.uk slash forums so we'll try and cover off your questions uh, as quickly as we possibly can or indeed perhaps when it comes to the full review so that is a quick overview of the OS on the HTC HD2 we'll be back shortly with some more information and the full review of the HD2 again on tracyandmat.co.uk over the next week or so and if you're a fan of our unboxing videos check out the others that we have on unboxings.com